Welcome to Pastors 53 on the road. Today I'm in Maryland visiting the Castro, visiting Jacques Massolini and uh, Jacques brought to America many of those amazing Salmer like this one 575 that was owned by Roger Chaput, mm -hmm. founding member with Django in 1934 of the Quintet. So mm -hmm. tell me Jacques when this passion when this old business <laughs> of guitar started uh, well it started as a as a child because my father was a um, an accordion player and so I uh, I grew up listening to Musette which uh, at the time nobody called it gypsy jazz or anything like that it was mostly Musette <laughs> you know accordion music and the other thing also about the style of music was that it was the accordion was in front the, um, guitar player was in the back mm -hmm. you know it was definitely just a pump that's all you that's all they ever were I mean if they were ever allowed you know a couple of bars of three single notes that was the extent of it so I grew up listening to the music and uh, many many years later with a, um, a childhood friend of mine I opened in Paris what was uh, the uh, the first uh, strictly vintage uh, guitar uh, shop and uh, bringing American guitars to uh, to France and sort of to condense the activity about um, probably in the very, very early 90s was when I first started to bring um, French guitars, you know, Selmer and Favino. Mm -hmm. And um, nobody had ever seen them, nobody had ever heard of the, the instruments. And, uh, and gradually, you know, started bringing a, a few more and a few more because I, it was a natural thing for me because I was in France bringing American equipment. It was mm -hmm. easy for me to, uh, you know, obviously look. And people would bring them to the shop. I mean, they would trade them to us. And, and, and that's how, you know, the, the, uh, the gypsy guitar was sort of introduced in America. And, um, and then through the um, uh, circumstance of meeting a, um, uh, a client who lived in D.C., he suggested I have a, a website, which of course I was really slow to uh, hmm. get together, and he uh, put it together for me. And um, and over time, you know, started uh, you know selling uh, entry level things. This is before the uh, Asian guitars arrived. You know, I was selling Patnod guitars and uh, Dimoro guitars, mm -hmm. the simpler one, the more the less expensive guitars. All along, looking of course for Selmer and Busato and uh, and Favino, mm -hmm. but. Um, and then gradually over time uh, became disinterested in selling new ones because it became you know a bit of a, a, a unpleasant in the sense that more and more people sell new guitars and mm -hmm. it's just inevitably somebody's going to call you one day and say well of all the new guitars you have which one's the best one and then at that point you have a decision to make which one do I want to you know, favor the today. Do I want to sell a Dupont today? Do I want to sell a Hall? Do I want to sell a mm. Imers? Do I want to sell a, you know, and so I thought my calling card has always been gypsy vintage guitars vintage, yeah. rather. And so I thought, why don't I stick to that and let other people sell new guitars? So now for at least a good couple of years, I haven't sold anything new and I am still strictly concentrating on uh, on getting vintage guitars, the the better, the finer ones, the nicer ones. Yeah. My uh, my other question was about uh, you talked a bit earlier about the the Salmer in the nineteen ninety. Uh -huh. How much were they? And explain to us a bit why the price. Uh, well, it's it, it it follows the same pattern that uh, that happened with American guitars because when I started um, in the I I began buying and shipping vintage American guitars to France. In, uh, the first shipment I sent was in March of 1978. And basically at the time, um, you know, there was a little bit of a, a burgeoning vintage market, which wasn't really altogether called that. But um, what happened is that, you know, the Japanese came and they actually, I am absolutely convinced that they created this market. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're the ones who actually, you know, made um, the things more and more desirable, the prices started to go up. And in the gypsy world, it's the same thing. You know, you, um, you find a guitar, you buy it for, you know, a, a sum of money, and then you sell it for more. And then the next person sees what you sold it for and said, well, I'd like that money. And inevitably, uh, it just goes up. And this is why 
guitars that you know were bought for just a few hundred dollars became thousands and then they became tens of thousands and in some cases hundreds of thousands and so it's not dedicated or reserved for the gypsy guitar it's it's guitars in general it's things it's old cars it's antiques it's mm. whatever it's the uh, wine wine <laughs> it's the price of admission you yeah. know why does it why is it that a particular instrument and it just follows that curve, you know, of heading up and uh, collectability. Mm. What I saw happen in the gypsy world was just like what happened in the uh, in the mm. American vintage. Um, again, being one's worst enemy in the sense that w deciding to post prices, mm -hmm. you know, and, and clearly declare to people this is what you know this guitar would sell for, and uh, inevitably. Suggesting people that they have they're valuable, mm -hmm. you know. So it's by doing this you become your your own worst enemy because you once you've once you've clearly said well this is something that's worth this, based on what I paid for it. Because of course I'm in business, you know. And so mm -hmm. if I buy a guitar for X, I'm adding a margin on top of that, and then the next person wants that very sum of money, mm -hmm. and and if the person is inflexible, then you say well. I'll have to raise the price, and the, over the course of yeah. ten, fifteen years, yeah. and the uh, this the um, again I'd mentioned this to you in, in conversation earlier. The first time I actually asked ten thousand dollars for a Selmer, which was in the uh, early nineties, ninety, you know, ninety two, ninety three, something like that, at a, at a Texas show, and a, um, a, a West Coast dealer bought this guitar for me it was a beautiful wartime beautiful condition original case a wartime bill of sale um and the guitar i asked ten thousand dollars and he paid me for it and at the time it made the rounds of the show saying why would anybody pay ten thousand dollars for such a guitar well obviously this is a long time ago and that guitar would be worth five times the hmm. same money today so it's not unlike the examples that we have about uh, american guitars you know, where uh, in the 90s they were a certain sum of money, and now in 2013 they're X amount of times more mm. because it's just a, it's the march of time. You know, it's a, mm. we cannot. Uh, there is no way to control that. It's uh, it's true for collecting guitars. It's true for collecting uh, vintage cars, wine, mm. any number of things like that. And um, <coughs> so it's it's tr I'm guilty of it. I've been part of it, <laughs> and certainly responsible for some of it. But, yeah. um, you know, at the same time, uh, you know, uh, being happy to have found what I've found because it's it's been my uh, intention all along to only find the best there is. Mm. And uh, and I'm thinking I've managed to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's the Roger Chapu. Yeah, that, a... yeah that, guitar was, uh, that guitar is a fabulous sounding guitar, it really is. And uh, it obviously was transformed. Yeah, with the and, uh, with the, the the sound hole and the uh, and the pick guard, but um, obviously Roger is no longer with us to tell mm. us why this was done, and he um, taught a gentleman, and um, this gentleman actually uh, that's how I got it, and um, and of course numbers five seven five is recorded in Franz book, book yeah. Yeah. and it's got Roger Chapu's name on it, so it is obviously his guitar, and. Um, I've not really, you know, looking for uh, celebrity things, or, which would mm -hmm. be what uh, people would call it today. It's never been a point. I mean, I've had some Ferré guitars in the in the past, and um, and some and some Favino guitars that have that have belonged to a number of, uh, of uh, mm -hmm. you know gypsy players. But um, it's um, the provenance is not all that significant to me. It's I mean, in this particular it just case, happened. Yeah. you know, it just yeah. it just happens exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why do you think this big, we'll say, explosion of for the style '99, 2000, around there? Well, I think that people were um, <coughs> people who were you know who hadn't heard it before discovered the extraordinary um, uh, richness of the, in, of, 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 of the of the music. I mean, they were you know when, uh, without debasing anything. I mean, when you listen to it, just popular music, it's pretty simple, straightforward. Mm -hmm. You know, three, four, five chords. When you look at gypsy music, it's just a harmonically, it's just extra extraordinary. I mean, the, the richness and and uh, and um, it's it certainly isn't a boring rhythmic 
uh, type of music where you can, you know, the rhythm player is has got as much an integral part mm. to the music as the lead player, which is not the case in popular music. Generally, the guy who plays rhythm just, you know, is what, what he used to be once when I was saying, mm. when he was sitting behind the accordion player. Um, gypsy players are just, uh, they revealed, you know, just how rich it is and how, what excite you know how exciting it is how it can combine the um, you know all the uh, the the jazz and swing elements to the central European uh, music and uh, with all of what it, it it's so broad because you you've got uh, you've got Spanish gypsies you've got um, Eastern European gypsies you've got Balkan gypsies every one of them is bringing something to the music and it, that's what makes it so. Uh, rich and unique because it's just so broad you know it encompasses so many uh influences mm. and uh, and the chops i mean the playing is just phenomenal mm. you know they're just uh they're just you know it, that's what i think um shocked people you know the the music the uh the extraordinary uh revelation to a lot of people that this music was just had so much to offer you know and uh, combined so many influences and and brought um an extraordinary amount of talent forward. So that's what I think. Ever found a, a bad Selmer? I mean, I found guitars that needed work. You yeah. know, I mean, I bad in the sense the that the sound. They were, uh, I, no, I mean, bad, bad. No, I mean, I think that in many cases there is there is what lies the potential that lies in in intrinsically in every instrument. Uh, some of them, you know, need have. Um, um, problems you know some of them have poor neck angles so the neck needs to be reset or um, the actions too much this way or that way or some of them you know it's it's just neglect you know they were mm. abandoned and and um, uh, the thing about uh, these guitars is you know often people say well why are there so few um, cases with these instruments and I remind them that the guitars, the guitars were extremely expensive in their day, and so m the majority of people could not afford the case. What's one of the most special guitar that you ever came across? Uh, special hmm, in many ways. Huh? Special in many ways. Well, I, you know, again, this is a, um, it's an interesting thing because of course it's hardly uh, really verifiable. But I bought. Um, uh, years and years ago, I met a gentleman, an elderly gentleman in uh, in Las Vegas, who actually sold me uh, a McAfee, a D-hole that belonged to Joseph, and uh, they were friends. And he was a uh, an Eastern European gentleman who, had, you know, started working in the auto industry in Detroit or something like that, and then you know ended his life. He's no longer alive. But he uh, he had bought the guitar from Joseph, and that was nice to have an, an instrument like that. Unfortunately, I lost the photograph. I lost the computer with all the uh, all the uh, stuff that was in it, and the photographs and the records and all that lost. But um, and of course, Roger Chaput's guitar. That's an interesting mm. one, of course. And um, you know, again, more than the, uh, the the people, it's the instrument. You know, they come through our lives. We're just you know custodian for a while. You know, they come and live with us and then they go and live in somebody else's life mm. until somebody else finds it so it's fine to um it's fun to have them and you know to keep company with them mm. and uh, uh to me they all have stories to tell you know mm. whether it's a selmer or a demo or whatever it is they have a life mm. and uh and when they come to you 50 or 60 or 70 years later it's really interesting to uh to imagine, you know, what mm. what they've known, what they've experienced, yeah. the, the music they played, and uh, what life they had. So, in a way, they're all they're all special, you know, for, mm. for that reason. Yeah. So, on your website, we can see many of the picture that you saw before, mm. and mm. Uh, new shipment always coming in. But also, you mentioned that uh, very soon you will have. Uh, New website with all the picture for right. Uh, yeah, no. The um, the the intention is to really update it. The website is you know at least every bit of ten years old, and it's it's rather static. You know, mm -hmm. it's um, again because as I've, as I've told you, I'm sort of lackadaisical about a lot of stuff, and uh, 
the, my friend uh, PJ Dolan, who does the, uh, the the website, is coming, and we're going to re-photograph all the guitars, mm -hmm. make something a lot a lot better in terms of uh, quality of um, photography, and um, revamping the, the website as well to give it a, a little bit of a coat of paint, you know, mm -hmm. something, and um, and eventually um, put some sound files as well, and. Um, Video. Yeah, because it's pardon video videos yeah. exactly <laughs> video sound f and sound yeah you know so uh, because it's it's, it's certainly a um, mm. um, thing that's needed to convince people of just what the the guitars are yeah yeah thanks very much Chuck You're welcome. for the visit that was uh, gypsy jazz land uh, dreamland <laughs> for any <laughs> fan yeah to visit yeah. the vault downstairs and uh, like I always say. Let's keep drinking good wine and let's keep playing those beautiful Guitars, yeah, instruments.